Hello and welcome to this presentation. My name is Dave Renninger. I'm the Application Specialist for the Engineering Segment here at Tecla Inc. This is the eighth video in our series showcasing Tecla structures for the engineering market. Our last video we showed how to use some nice out-of-the-box components to easily model in plate work. In this video what we're going to do now is showcase some of the components that we have out of the box to get into more detail with different connection types. Alright, so to start, so to make this easier for what I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply a nice filter here in my model view to make it easier to see just the objects that I want to see. Then I'm also going to come through here and hide my reference model as well. Again, just to make it nice and easy to see just the steel framing that I want. So now when I come in um, to start applying some of these components, again, we could use the manual modeling tool, similar to what we saw to model in the beams and columns, to model in the actual detail material. But to make this easier, we already have a library of tools, which in tech will be called components. So again, I'm going to come back in here to the component catalog, which again, we have seen this briefly in some of the previous videos in this series. But now we're going to get into some more detail of what these components actually are. So the first thing I'm going to do here, I'm just going to do a search for the word base in my component catalog, just to show you some of the out-of-the-box base plate components that we have. So basically what we can do is just come through here now and just browse to the connection type that we need. In this case, I'm going to use the US base plate 1047. And to apply these base plate components, we simply just select the column and then the location where we want to add the base plate. And as you can see that this base plate component now will come through, it's going to add the base plate, the grout, the anchor rods, as well as the welds. This will also cut the column short as well. So what's nice about this, I can just simply double click on these component properties here. And this is actually going to control everything inside of this component. So as you see here, if I were to come in and just increase the thickness of the base plate, and modify the nuts and washers are automatically going to move up as that base plate gets thicker. Notice here that the column is also going to get shorter as well. So just like everything else inside Tecla, we can save attributes for these components as well to make it easier to reapply connections either on this project or on other projects as well. So here as I come through and load my straight anchor bolt attribute, here we see we have the anchor bolts with plates, but this base plate's a little bit too small. So again, nice and easy to come through and fix this. We can just revise the size of that base plate. Now the bigger plate, we could even come up if we need to and just resave that attribute as well. If we want to use that same base plate elsewhere on the model, simply now just single click on that icon and it's just that easy to come through and reapply these base plates here in the model. We can also select multiple columns at one time and apply the base plate to all of those at the same time. Just clean up. So the next connection that we'll look at is just some of our basic beam to column connections here as well. So again, back in the component catalog, we have some nice categories already set up here just to make it easier to find the connection types you're looking for. You can also create your own categories. You notice up here there's also a favorite section where you can tag those for the, your preferred connections as well. So we're going to come now to the, the beam to column connections. And here you can see that we have most of the standard connection types out of the box already included. So you have your clip angles, bent plates, end plate type connections. We also have through plates for tubes with or without stiffeners. We have some moment connections. So pretty much any kind of connection you're going to run into, we already have covered here out of the box. So in this demonstration, I'm just going to use the clip angle connection. And for this one, all I have to do is just simply click the column and then pick the beam. And it's going to go through and it's going to add that connection in. All right, so these connections here, it's going to automatically put the, the clip angles, bolts, the welds, all the information here as well. And what's nice about these connections now is that they are parametric. So now if this anything changes with this column, if the profile changes or even if the column rotation changes, these components will automatically update with that. So you can see here that as I rotate this column, both of these connections have automatically updated that framing to handle that revision. So again, we can simply just come back here, change that column rotation again. And now our beam connections automatically update as well. So handling revisions makes it much faster here inside Tecla structures. So we can also come through here, we can add some uh, bracing connections. So again, just like we did here with the search for the word brace, once you start to learn some of these components, we can also search by their numbers as well. So what's nice about this then is once we start to get these figured out, again, we could also add these to our own favorites categories. So I'm just going to come through here now and start to add some of the bracing connections. So with these, I just basically just going to pick my supporting member, pick my braces, middle mouse click, and it's going to come through and it's going to add the gusset plate and connection material. And just like it was with the other connections, the other components, I can easily come through and modify these settings as well as needed for the different framing conditions I need in this project. So you can see how quick and easy this is. Once we get these attributes set up, we can really come through and connect the model with minimal effort. Yep. 
Now connect these, uh, the braces that are coming in here at the beam, since these three are all going to connect, we have a different component that we're going to use for those. And this is just going to be a wraparound gusset connection. Similar process to what we just looked at before. We just pick the column, then the brace, then the beam, middle mouse click, and now it's going to connect all these parts together. So again, we'll just go around the, this area here and reconnect all these other members. just this easy to go through and connect. So again, let's redraw our view and clean this up a little bit. Now you can see how easy we have this connected. Now we could go through and we could individually apply the connection and the components here at these other framing conditions. But another tool we have in Tekla that's actually going to make this process much easier is what's called an auto connection. So what I'm going to do now is just simply select this steel framing here in the model. And when I open up my auto connection, now I just have some rule groups that I can choose from here as far as what connection types I want to use in my model. So I'm just going to pick my clip angles, and then I also have here what rule groups do I want. So basically what this is showing is in certain framing conditions, what kind of a connection do I want to use, and then also which one of my saved attributes do I want to use in a more defined framing condition. So now that I have my rules group set up, I just click on Create Connections. Now Tekla is going to go through and it's going to connect. Now what's also nice about this is that if there's already a component that exists, Tekla will skip over that connection to make sure that it's not going to override any of the manual work that we've done. So now if we come in and look, now we can see that this model has been fully connected now based off of those rules and conditions that we told it to use. So just like we saw with the when the column rotation changes, the same thing would happen here if we had any kind of revised elevation framing. And this is always can be really time consuming, especially when you have a bay like this with bracing. So in this case here, I'm just going to select some of these beams, and I'm just going to move these up five feet here in my Z direction. Now you can see here when those beams move up, all of these bracing connections are going to automatically update with that revised framing as well. So one other benefit of these components is when copying framing. So I'm just going to come back in here real quick and turn on the rest of my model. I'll set this back to standard. Modify. So now if we need to copy any of this framing, all of these components can easily be copied and reapplied to the new framing as well. So I'm just going to come in here and select an area of my model. And come in and we'll get these connections in here as well. Let's deselect our slab. So once I have all my connections and my framing material selected, I can simply copy and say we'll copy this from column line 4 to 5. Now we can see here when I redraw my view, all of these bracing connections have automatically reapplied as I copy that framing. So again, really easy to come through and copy and revise framing here inside Tecla. Okay, so this concludes this video. The next video in our series, we're going to be showcasing some of the rebar modeling inside Tecla structures. Thank you again for watching.